Hi everyone, my name is Cheryl and this is my Happy Handcraft Studio. Welcome. Uh, thank you for joining me. I live in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains near Calgary, Alberta. I'm a multi-crafter and a book lover and so I'm very happy to have you here with me today. Thank you to everyone who chooses to watch my videos. Uh, I especially thank the people who subscribe and leave comments. I love to hear about what you're doing and um, what you feel about the content on my channel. I really like when a person subscribes and leaves a comment to tell me a little bit about themselves. It's great to, to know about my viewers. So I'm going to start with a few comments that I did receive. My last video, I talked a lot about the Ukrainian influence in Alberta. And many of my viewers commented on, on that. You know, you don't realize that where you live is different until something like this comes up. And we have a really strong Ukrainian influence in the Prairie Provinces. Of Canada and some good news for the people of our province we welcomed over 60 Ukrainian people who came from Ukraine yesterday we're so fortunate that we have um, relatives living in Alberta that were able to quickly organize visas for their family members so that they could come to stay in our province, hopefully until, you know, things settle down in Ukraine and they're able to return. So the plane that brought the Ukrainian people to Edmonton, Alberta, is going to be returning to Poland with over $20 million worth of goods in the plane. And that was uh, planned, um, promoted by one of our former premiers and a former member of the Legislative Assembly who are both of Ukrainian descent and they help to encourage other Ukrainian people in our community to donate goods and um, arrange for a donated plane to take everything back to Poland to help with, I guess you'd say, the refugee situation in Poland. So very proud of the Alberta response. So I was had a really busy couple of weeks finishing up prompts. Thank you to everyone who voted uh, through Steel City Stitchers March Madness on Instagram. That spearheaded a lot of my plans, so that was great. Uh, one of the projects that I had over there for you to vote on was my Prairie Schooler. And I have that finished. I'm not fully finishing it for a while until I know, until I get a couple more of them done, and then I'll make a decision and, and finish them all in a similar way. So it's nice to have that one done. Now I I need to choose which, which one to do next of the Prairie Schoolers. Maybe I'll put a poll on Instagram and you can help me choose which one of these. So this is a really good Canadian one with the skates and the hockey stick. I love this one with the Singer sewing machine or the sewing machine. I don't know if it's a singer. I just say singer because that was what my mother had. And then cross country skiing, which is another great outdoor sport. So, I'll put a poll over on Instagram, 
Uh, and if you're not on Instagram, just comment below which one you think I should do. So this one is the 2010 Cross Country Skiing. Uh, 2006 is with the sewing machine. And 2009 is with the skates. So I'd love for you to help me decide because I, I mean, I, I bought them. I love them all. It'd be hard to decide. Okay, so that was uh, my finish. Now, I also had two FFOs, fully finished objects. So one of my um, projects that you were voting on was called First Snow. And this is a free pattern by the Drawn Thread. And I did this just as a flat finish. Uh, just I'll lean it up against things on my bookshelf. So that was finished. And then the project that won for March Madness was Holy Night by Barbara Anna Designs. This was in the 2019 Punch Needle and Primitive Stitching Magazine, Christmas Winter. And this was one I did on the 32 count Dove Gray Lugana that I like so much. So that one is all ready to go and that just has some homespun on the back. Yeah, so I like, like how that turned out. All right, so that was um, my fully finished and finished objects. So I had a lot of different um, projects on the go. So I'll start with the ones that I do every month. So the first one is the one I do daily, and that is my temperature library. This is from Christie's Corner. And this is the bookshelf. So getting right near the end of March, this month there was a picture of a mountain scene, which is perfect because that's what I look at whenever I'm driving home. Love that. And so, you know, April's coming. That'll be another shelf to start soon. So that's a daily project. And then I have a weekly project. And the weekly project is from Peppermint Purple. And that is the 20, 2022 Black Work Sal. And I'm up to date with the center squares and worked a little bit more on my border. Love that. Easy to keep up weekly with that project. And then the one that is monthly, and this is a huge beast. It's, it's just huge. So this is from Fox and Rabbit. Changing Seasons. So I'm not anywhere near caught up on this because, I mean, it's huge. So for January was all the outside border and this inside border. So to give you an idea, the outside border is 360 by 360. Uh, then that was January. February was the center. So I have the center done. And then March, I need to get one of these into each corner. Now I have a really sad story about this project. And the sad story is that I was doing this motif and it was, it was stitching up so hard. 
like I thought, is there something wrong with my needle? Um, I mean, it was just taking, it was so much harder to find the holes in the linen. And I thought, you know, is this, is this too much of a high count? I'm trying to think just what it is here. It's on a 32 count Belfast natural. I, I was just struggling and struggling. And so I did this whole motif, and then I, I had already blocked this in with a single stitch. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to put another thread into this. And so I put a, one thread in, and when I turned it over, there weren't any other stitches from my previous stitches there. What I had done was I had doubled up this on my Q-snap. I had another layer of linen underneath. And it was so tight in my Q-snap that I never noticed that I had double fabric. And so after 400 stitches, the next day I ripped out 400 stitches and put them back in. You know, no damage. And luckily I noticed before I did, I don't, like, I don't know. It, it, it's positive in that, okay, now I'm on the track back to getting this done. I didn't sleep very well that night because of my sadness. But I tend to just get over things, so I got over it. All right, some other things that I've worked on to um, work on prompts. So when I'm choosing which prompts to do or which projects to put with prompts, I always try to go for my oldest prompts. And so this is Dancer. I have Dancer from Barbara Anna Designs. And this was in Punch Needle and Primitive Stitching Magazine, 2021. And I basically finished up those years and a little bit around the eye. This is on a 32 count charcoal Lugana. And then I also put some more stitches into Noble Companions. Noble Companions is from this book, Christmas Portraits. And this will be the result, hopefully. And this is where I am so far. So I worked on the sled or sleigh over on that side. Uh, so, one of my WIPCO projects for March was a new start, and that was Boo. Here. And I got a good start on that one. It's quite solid stitching, so there's a lot of stitches in that one. This is um, from Luminous Fiber Arts, and it's on a 16-count Ada Platinum swag art. I also did quite a bit on spring 1881 and again this is punch needle and primitive stitching magazine and it's on a really slubby unknown linen now this one i'm going to get a lot more into because for my whip go 
for April. One of my um, blocks was on number 10, any whip for five hours. So I'm going to spend the five hours on this one because I'd really like to get it done this spring. And another whip go plan is going to be my Santa cones. So this is just the black and white. It shows what the cones will look like when they're done. And so there'll be five hours on this. So that should pretty much finish it, I would hope, because it's not full stitching. And this is just on a red Ada. The book what, that it came from was called Cross Stitch Gifts from 1993. All right. Um, anything else? Oh, yes. What my new project for Whip Go will be Garden Sampler. And this was a free pattern from Hirschner's. And I'm going to be doing it on a 28 count tea dyed Irish linen. So I haven't started this one. I get to start that one in April. So great to have a new start. And I'm also going to be putting another five hours into Boo because one of my um, prompts for Whip Go was five hours on my newest start and Boo was my newest one. So that's great. I'm also going to be doing the magazine monthly uh, acrostic and the acrostic is literature. And so I'm going to be putting five hours into my Jane Austen sampler. I figured that was a really great one for literature. And I'm also going to be doing an hour on Dancer, an hour on Noble Companions. I have an hour more on Spring, 1881. I have the Mill Hill Needlework Fairy that I just have beading left to do on that one. I've also included um, Santa Cones, Watermelon Tourmaline, and a kit that I have from Mill Hill called Fa La La. So I'll have a good variety of stitching over the next while. I'm adding in this little section because when I started to put things away, I remembered that there were some patterns I wanted to share with you. So some were free patterns and some one I purchased. So this one I think is just beautiful. This is from Peppermint Purple. This is the, from the Blackwork Sal that I'm doing and she is offering this free pattern uh, for Ukraine. And I love what it says, when the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. Jimi Hendrix. I just think that's wonderful. So I hope to start that sometime in the spring. And then another free pattern. This was a stitch along on Facebook from Doreen Jones. And it's um, Flowers and Bees Sal. So if you go over and join her Facebook group, the entire pattern is there for you. And I really, I really like it. Um, I think it'll be a really good summer, summer one. So I hope to, to work on that as well. And then finally, I decided to buy myself a birthday present. I have a birthday in April. And so I chose to buy... Oology. Every time I saw it, I just go, oh, I love that. And Helen D. just finished hers and has a finishing video for how to do to do it. So I decided that's that's a present for me. Happy birthday to me. And Oology 
is the collection and study of birds' eggs. I love that. I don't think it's great to collect birds' eggs, but I love the, the, the title. So, you might see those coming up soon. So maybe by the next video, some of these will be started. Uh, I am reminded that uh, on Sammy Sane Stitchers, I've been doing Letters of Fortune. And last month, uh, last time I commented, I talked about how much I enjoyed it. Wordle. Well, April got back to me and she said, well, do you also do Quirtle? I do. I do do Quirtle. Well, and then April listed a couple others that she knew about. And I love them. I mean, it's my morning coffee. I work my way through all of these. Uh, the other one she mentioned was called Knuckle. And Knuckle is Canadian wordle. It's it's great. I mean, the, the terms all have something to do with Canada. And when you solve it, they give you the little fun fact about the word, which I think I think is great. Now, the, I've also been doing global. And this one is stretching me. Like, I'm, I'm really good with words, but I'm not great with geography. And with global, you, you start, you, you pick a place in the world, and then it shows you how close you are to the mystery country. And, um, you know, I have, to have, I have my atlas near me because I don't know what borders Latvia. So... I, you know, I'm, I'm looking now to find out. So I really love that, you know, something fun is also stretching my, my knowledge of world geography. And then I'm doing Nerdle. And Nerdle is a math equation that you figure out. Now, I can feel my brain when I'm doing Nerdle. Because it's definitely using parts of my brain that I haven't used probably for too many years. 50 years probably since I was doing equations in high school. But yeah, it's, it's great. Um, I often think at the beginning, well, I can't figure this out. But, you know, I usually can within three or four equations I can figure out what the solution is. And so it's that one is really giving me a great sense of accomplishment. Quite enjoying that. So that's my newest um, addiction, I guess, in, in a great way. You know, it's, it's all good. So quilting. For the last two weekends, I've had Saturday morning sessions to deal with learning how to do this Dresden quilt block. It's Dresden Quilt Blocks Reimagined, and it's by Candice Cop Grisham. She goes by Candy. Candy is from Missouri. And so we were able to have a Zoom workshop with the, one of the quilt guilds that I'm with, and she's a great teacher. If you're involved in some guilds, quilt guilds see about booking her she she's so well organized um she really she's done this a lot step by step teaching and then afterwards she offers um her videos for each of the sections that she teaches so you can review the video to see what it was that she taught so i'll show you some of the blocks that I made. So this is a, I haven't attached the circles yet, the centers. Uh, this was one of the round edged ones and she shows how to make a facing to do that. And then this is another version. And for these, uh, I have a whole selection of Asian prints that I was using. Mm. 
you learn different ways of um, turning the ends. And then the final one I'll show today is huge. I don't know what I'm going to, to do with this. But you can see what happens when you use a border print. Love it. Yeah, so that was a really pleasurable two mornings uh, learning how to put these together. Her book is great. Um, you know, lots of examples, ideas on how to do it at the end. There's lots of different samples from students that she's had. So I, I'm hoping right at this moment I'm thinking I want to make like a t long table runner and position the different um, Dresden plates onto it. So that was that was a great learning. I really enjoyed it. So now books. I have two books that I want to talk about. So the first one was The Lincoln Highway. So Lincoln Highway was written by Amor Tolles. I'm not sure if that's how you say his name. Amor Tolles also wrote The Gentleman in Moscow, which was a book I really enjoyed, but totally different from The Lincoln Highway. Lincoln Highway takes place in 1950s America, and it's a road trip, uh, a road trip along the Lincoln Highway. The Lincoln Highway was the first highway to join East Coast to West Coast. It starts in Times Square, New York City, and it ends up on the West Coast. And it's the story of two brothers, Emmett and Billy Watson, who have been left orphaned. Um, and... They head out to start a new life. Now, Emmett had had some bad luck and had ended up in on a work farm for a year to pay back for a crime he committed. And um, after the warden delivers Emmett back home, we find out that two of his former work farm inmates had hidden away in the trunk of the warden's car. And um, there's a reason why these two men, were, young men, were in a work farm. They, they hadn't necessarily made some of the best decisions in their life. And their poor choices continue to influence Emmett and Billy's lives. And it's, it's really... It's a quest. Uh, it's, you know, a quest for a fortune. It's a quest to find family. It is a really interesting book. Um, you know, this is one that, you know, I'd like to see the movie. Like, I hope, I hope they make a movie of this because I'd love to see, you know, the landscape that they, they drive. I think probably starts in Iowa. I'm not not sure, come to think of it, just where they start off the journey. But it, it's it's a great, great book. And then the second one I want to talk about is Cracked Pots. So people who've been watching this channel know that I um, really love The Clay Girl. And this is by Heather Tucker. And it's the story of Harriet Appleton, who becomes Ari Appleton, and the life that she lived. So the Clay Girl is all about the dysfunctional family that Ari comes from, an addicted mother, um, they say here a depraved father, and then she gets a crazy stepfather. But luckily in Ari's life, she has wonderful sisters. She has great teachers. She um, had a stepfather, who Len, who was an amazing man who, who also had 
an amazing family who helped Ari along the way. And so this second book is about how she ends high school and what her future looks like. So great. It was really good. Um, I think what I liked about it too was the importance of art in healing, how we need art, music to um, rebuild our lives. So we learn about cracked pots and you can see from this picture there is a Japanese uh, pottery technique of taking cracked pottery and filling it with silver, uh, gold, platinum to make something that has been broken even more beautiful. And I, I really, I really like that, that image of, you know, we can, we're all broken in some ways. How is it that we can be mended to be even more beautiful than before? So I definitely recommend this one as well. Read the first one. Read Clay Girl first and then Cracked Pots. All right. So I think, I think that's everything I wanted to talk about today. I will put a poll over on Instagram and please vote vote for uh, which prairie schooler ornament i should do next i look forward to seeing you all again and i love reading your comments bye everyone